Trying to go to sleep every night in that house was too much. I needed a break. Thankfully, my cousin let me come stay with him one night just to play video games and be a kid. But unfortunately, that meant my grandmother would be alone. Or the it. What she would do on this night puzzles me to this day, and I'll never understand why. She always slept either in her recliner or on the couch in the living room. But on this night, for some reason, she just wanted to sleep in an actual bed. So she did. Now in that room, lying in bed, she pulled the covers over her head, which is just a strange way that she would always fall asleep. And that's what she did. She fell asleep. But as soon as she began to drift away, she felt the presence fill the room. She knew what it was. It was evil. She was too afraid to look. She just hoped and prayed that it would go away if she ignored it. She was wrong. She was motionless, frozen in fear, and the room was dead silent. Suddenly a force came crashing down over her face. She couldn't see anything because the cover was covering her face. But as she tried to push the pressure off, she felt something pushing back. There was a pillow over her head. Someone was trying to smother her, struggling to breathe and fighting for her life. She realized there was no hands on the other side of that pillow, but there was a force there that she could not budge. Each time she grasped for a breath, it pushed harder and harder. She fought with everything she had, but it was just too much. Before she passed out, she uttered the words that I believe saved her life. I rebuke you in Jesus' name. Immediately, she went unconscious. Everything went black. Her eyes begin to open and break through the foggy haze. She's disoriented and confused because she's standing up. Now, outside of my grandfather's room, the door directly behind her shut and locked. She tried to move, but she couldn't. She looked down and realized that the covers that she slept with wrapped around her from her chest to her feet, her arms bound tight to her body. She couldn't take a step without falling over. It took some time for this fragile woman to set herself free, but finally she was. She looked back at the door and it was locked and shut. Terrified and confused, but somehow thankful that she's still alive. She went back to the living room, sat in her recliner. How did she make it out of the room alive? Though this experience was terrifying, it should have been deadly. And the only reason that it wasn't was because the evil force in our home wasn't the only spiritual being there. There was something else, something good, fighting for us. And it showed up just in time. <laughs>